it in your mind. There is a better place than here. And we all, this here is pretty good. Here is very good compared to 98% of the rest of the world population. But there's even a better place. So this morning, get that thought in your mind. And Bonnie goes right next door to 253, and that's saying he set me free. He set you to what we're, we're free to go. Get that in your mind. Don't let Satan bind you down with no doubts that there is not a heaven to gain, but there's also a hell to shun. He set us free so we can go. Praise the Lord. Sing these songs with inspiration, with full assurance that you believe, yes. okay? Set me free. So this morning we just thank you for taking the time to come out. 
taking the time to get up out of your bed. Yeah. But you know what, Larry? As the dark, days get darker, we better get brighter. Amen. We, we better, we as, we, we as Christians better get saltier yeah. as, as the days yeah. and times is coming upon us. Young men, older men, young women, yeah. older women, whatever the case might be, God's got a work here for every one of us to do. As our brother preached here about three weeks ago, yeah. there's different things that he wants all of us to do. Yeah. And these, these, this family has been doing it for a number of years, and they'll, they'll tell you a little bit more about it. My God, and we see another prayer answer just walk through the door. Uh, uh, Beverly, the, the, the hill on the way, that her brother brought her name here to church. You know, you, you don't know how blessed it is to have a, a family member that's saved, that takes your name to the Lord in prayer. You don't know what might have happened if they hadn't went there and asked for prayer for you. So this morning we thank you. We thank God that you're here. We thank God that you've got a desire to be here and that you want to be here. So this morning, just raise your hand if you've got an unspoken request. If you've got an unsaved loved Amen. one, if you've got somebody else in the ark of safety, if the rapture would happen within the next few minutes, if the rapture would happen anytime, where would they spend eternity? And eternity is a time period that we don't never, ever know without end. It's without end. It's without end. It's without end. So we praise God that we've got to, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to answer to that. We've got an answer to that. Did anybody in here? Anybody in here bring your Bible? Raise your hand. Think about it. Get up. Does anybody bring your Bible? Raise your hand. Not that I feel that the Smart family. She, they, she writes songs, and I don't know if my brother writes too or not. But they, the songs that they write, we want them to be biblical. We, we, we like biblical songs, don't we? We want God's word to be. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Helps his daddy carry tools, put tools away, helps him build, helps his mother, comes to ride to church with her, even's not afraid to ride with her from Buckhannon to Philip. He'll ride with her. <laughs> Davey, would you come up here, please? Chrissy, will you come up here and get my phone and take a picture of these birthdays, please, when you get time? Okay. Davey, you come right here and stand so that this camera can get a good picture of you. Try to see what I can find out here for you, okay? Oh my God, my God, oh I know, I know, I know. This is a lot of hard work that this boy does. <coughs> well, I don't know if he's got a key yet, but he's going to get a key maybe to a car pretty soon. That's your name, that's your name, Davy Lance, right? Okay. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Anniversary. 
that you see how everything has starts and beginnings. And this is one of the parts of, it's not the end, it's not the beginning, it's in the middle of it, that's causing that this young man can be in church for his birthday. Mike, Bonnie, come on up here.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at our jewels are in all sizes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Now, the very best, the very best. Spirit, good fellowship, God. and uh, just pray as we go to do this. This is going to be a, a long day for us for Travel Mercies this evening. We're going clear up to Hendricks, up toward Dry Fork and Canaan at yes. six. So we're we're going to be running the roads. Um, 
I'll give a quick testimony before we sing here, and then we'll see what God gives us after that. Uh, but long story short, uh, as you see, we have a new addition. This is Andrew, yep. and he's our next miracle, so we thank God for that. Um, as you knew before, that we had a hard time with David, but praise God, he was able to carry full term, and I actually had to be induced with this one, so it was very weird to try to keep one in and fight to get one out. So, yeah, yes, <laughs> so you know, God God took care of that situation. Jimmy's been a little under the weather the past month or so. He's had a couple um, operations, but he's doing better. Praise so he's the on the men. So God's given a hedge of protection for that. Um, my job was ripped last year while I was pregnant with him, and I was getting ready to get something else, and God said, go full-time ministry. So... Here we are. So I'm, I'm a stay-at-home mom slash music ministry and sometimes even preach, just whatever God gives us. I, I'm not a preacher by any means, but if God gives a word, we'll do that. So I brought this just in case. You just never know. But uh, you wouldn't, I like that she sees how many people bring their Bible because people are lacking doing that. You wouldn't go squirrel hunting without your rifle, so you shouldn't go to church without your, without your Bible. So, Jesus is coming soon, and we need to be ready. We need to start praying and really have a burden for those um, that are not in the fold or backslidden. And make sure that they're ready. We're at the 11th hour, and people's taking it for granted. They know it, but they're not really pushing and getting sincere. We had revival at our church this week, and I told them Friday night, um, our church, usually the men, we, we have an open spirit, but usually the men ask for anointing or things like that. And I just told them, I said, we need to have an anointing service. I said, we need to start getting serious about these people that are not in our church, yes, that are not saved. And right. you know, we say we're praying, but we need to do something about it and uh -huh. do it together. Uh -huh. So we did that because we know that Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon, yes. Coming soon.
I too want to witness for Christ this morning and say that I love him with all my heart. I'm yes. thankful that back in 1972 he saved me. Praise the Lord, yes. He didn't make me perfect. No. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes down the way. Yes. You know, I'm thankful that, you know, the night when I, before I go to sleep, I, I asked him to forgive me for anything yes. I said, did, yes. Yes. that wasn't in his will. Uh-huh. And he'll forgive me. He does. I thank you for that. Uh, praise the Lord. I, I want to say that, that God's always with us. Amen, yeah. brother. And, and he was certainly with me a couple, well, the, 20, the 27th of last month. I was in Springfield, Ohio, me and David. I went up there to buy, I buy a lot of stuff. Junk, this, that, and the other. So I, I do a lot of trading. Anyhow, I went up there to buy a bunch of stuff. And, I'd had an operation on the 20th, seven days before that, and I started taking some medicine too quick, and I started bleeding in my bladder. So I got up there, and it was the worst pain I've ever in my life. Oh, my, my. Thank God it only lasted until the doctor got there and took me to the emergency room, to the operating room. About, about 35, 40 minutes I was in pain. But everything went smooth. He got me all straightened up. Thank and, God. And I'm just thankful that, that that it had to happen. It happened there. Yes. And God didn't allow it to happen on the understand. No, no, no. It would have been terrible. Oh, yes. yes. Terrible. So I just praise him for that, and I thank him for all he's done for oh, me. Oh, hallelujah. And, uh, hallelujah. and uh, as Rachel said, you know, pray for us that as we go from place to place, we've been doing a lot of singing. Yes, yes. Uh, all over. And, uh, and we do need your prayers yes. and that we'll always be in his will Amen. And, and do what he wants us to Amen. do. Amen. That's the key. About, uh, Praise God. As soon as I touch the couch. <laughs>
Praise Ooh. the Lord, Jesse. Thank we all have You're one. blessing yourself and yes. you bless someone Praise else. God. Praise God. God. We're all have one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You, you might be thinking here, We uh, sometimes we ask for uh, some, uh, special requests. Maybe some of old songs you like for us to try. Uh -huh. Sometimes we get stumped. And sometimes we don't. Yes. <laughs> If you got one you like for us to try, okay. we will. We had one request, and I we haven't sung it for a long, long time. Okay. But we're going to do her. Okay, praise uh, the Lord. We're going to do her. Uh, let's see. I wanted to hear David do it. Yeah, I hate that. He, David, 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 David's at the, <clears throat> he's at the age he's shy. Yes. Uh, yes. And yeah, he, don't take it personal. He still sings no, in the house all the no, time. He won't, yeah. He's 12 going on 30, and God's going to have to motivate him a little bit to get back into singing out in front of people. So not to push CDs, but if you want to hear him sing, there's CDs back there with him singing on it. That's the best I can do today. He will, he, he will get back into it. I, I will not force him. No, 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 nothing no, no, no. To, you can't do that. It'll do more harm than it does good. Yes, it will. But if you, if you got one or, after a bit you like for us to try, we certainly will. Okay. Andy will make up for it. He's my Pentecostal pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs>
God for us to try. Yes. <laughs> Lord, keep me in your will so I won't get in your way. You know that one. Lord, keep me in your will so I won't get in your way. Like you're thinking about it, I'll testify. That's, all, that's my desire. God, keep me in your will so I won't get in your way because there's lots of things I want to do and lots of things I think and lots of ifs and ands and all that. And I know as the days get darker, Satan will come as an angel of light as possible. And he will deceive many to things they can't be deceived yet. I don't care. That's like I tell people in this crowd lots of times. People in the Jim Jones crowd and in the other crowds, yeah. they had PhDs. They were so educated, they probably couldn't put all their initials after their names. But if you don't hear the truth and receive the truth, and you try to get ahead of God, yeah. Yeah. sister, like you said, you thought about getting another job, but He told you what to do. We want to get ahead of God. Please keep me in your will, Lord. I don't want to ever get any way to you or cause somebody to stumble or tell them a false. Thing that would cause them to go heaven. Because I know blood will be required at our hands. Those that know the Lord, you're sitting in churches and you're hearing God's word. You've got a greater responsibility yeah. to whom much is given. Yeah. Much is going to be required. So I praise God that there's still people who says they wait on the direction of the Lord. Yes. Say well, I like that song. I know which one you're talking about, but I don't know it well enough really to do it. But if you would take a rain check. I'll take one. And it's funny that you would mentioned about songwriting. I, I'm not a very good songwriter, but I guess my one song that I felt really content with, um, shoot, it's probably been 15 years ago since I recorded it, but he doesn't know it, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's called Lead Me On. Oh, praise God. And it talks about... You know, letting God lead you and direct you yes. and doing what He wants you to do, yes. not what you want to do, and do. you think you're in control because we're not in control. Oh, and okay. as we were singing the Holy Hills, you know, it just reminded me I lost a cousin about a month ago due to overdose. Oh. And, uh, you know, of course, that just it, it's happening everywhere. It's everywhere. And the boy had so many opportunities, <laughs> well, he was and he had so many opportunities, but like she said, the devil's out to seek and destroy what he made devour. Yes. Because he knows the time, once again, is short. Yeah. short. I know God just keeps putting it on there. Yes, but Second Corinthians keeps telling us, my grace is sufficient, yes. and my perfectness is shown in your weakness. Yes. Yes. And, you know, even though it was a tragedy, it's getting the, the rest of the family's attention. Yes. The because Lord. there's Praise a lot the of them that wasn't in church or hadn't been in church for a long time, and they're starting to throw out questions. We uh -huh. had a boy... He didn't go to our church, too, but his mother goes with us, and he had hung himself. The devil is wanting so oh, much is, mass confusion. And like you said, you can be the smartest person on books. I have a doctorate, and I'll tell you what, it's a piece of paper. When uh -huh. Jimmy came to me and said, you know, just stay home, yes, you know, that, that was my sign of God's direction because I was still looking for jobs, and I'm like, what am I going to do? And he said, just stay home with the kids. Yes, and I, yes. you know, and we prayed about it, and that's what happened. Praise God. But people are so wrapped up in what what society's telling oh, them and yes, things and, yes. and we're not listening to the voice of God mm -hmm. and um, I don't know just lately I, I talk more I, I gotta put new opinions Bless I mean I kind of sing but Bless we just you know I God's just changing things in leaps and bounds I've yes. been helping at my cousin's church they yes. have a Assembly of God church over at Elkins I've been helping out two days a week doing Wonderful. music programs with it Wonderful. and they've got some um, learning disabilities and things and it's really triggering the kids Thank to God. you know stay focused in their Thank studies God. As a bribe, I guess, but you know, whatever it takes to get them focused back on God and what they're supposed to do. Um, I'm just excited for what God is doing because when we think we have it figured out, we don't have anything figured out, and it all changes, and it's really cool to see what God does. So, I'm going to do this one for you instead. It's called Leave Me On. In the darkness of the night, I think of all the time. Hearts be in trouble today. Then it occurs to me my faith has grown so weak. Lord, I've stepped in.
Do you have a substitute? We're certainly getting stoned. <laughs> you all know God rocked the dark field. Hey! Is that okay for a substitute? <laughs> They're not going to learn how. That's right. So as long as he's not, you know, tearing up the chairs or the pulpit or anything crazy, I just let him go because sometimes he gets happy and dances and claps and whatever, and that's how you learn them. You, you know, you let them do, and if you tell them to sit down and shut up, then when they're an adult, that's what they're going to do, and then they're not going to do anything. So. I need words for that.
God bring me to a yeah. moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, like what some in the morning about this early this Sunday morning. I wake up and had to pick up the day kids and heart problem my God. And I just ran my back up my heart and just crying out. So I just stayed there and prayed and got up. It's been really that down for a while. It's happened more time than once before. But God's took care of me through it all. Yeah.
Chinese more than anything. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. World peace. You know what? If you if you was a millionaire this morning uh -huh. and didn't have Jesus, you know what? You'd be lost and undone That's right, on brother. the way to a hell. Yeah. And there is a hell this morning, mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Just as well as there's a heaven, there is a hell. Yes. And you know, I want him to say, well done. You know, when I fast, hey, I know I'm, I might not have long to be here. I really don't care. You know, whether I go, whether I stay, it don't matter. Yeah. You know what? We wasn't made to stay here. You know what? Our home ain't here. It's up there. You know what? Jesus said, all we got to do is Praise believe on him. Praise the Lord. Bless our mouth. That he is Lord. You know, we go be with him. It's no hard thing. It, it's an easy way. It's so easy this morning. All you've got to do is trust in God, confess Him, you know, and live for Him. You know what? It ain't no hard way. It's an easy way. You know what? Surrender all to Jesus. Give it to Him. Amen. You know what? The things that in this life that you've got to put up with, you know what? It's not mine because, you know, there is sickness. There is things that comes up. I can't do it. There is no way. No way. You know what? You've got to put it, give it in God's hands. Yes. You know what? Whether... It has, he will be what he does. Yes. And you know what God does in his prayer? He does. He'll answer one way or another. He hey, but we got, when he answers, you know what? We got to say yes for whatever you want. Yes. It's your will, Lord, not my will. But you know what? What God loves to do, I love to think, well, I can do it better or I can want it this way. But you know what? God's way is the best way. And I do love him this morning. And you know, when I leave this world, I want to be in heaven with Jesus. Yeah. We're going to do this one more, and it's entitled The Old Ship of Song. Mm -hmm. oh, no.
But uh, as we were singing, this this came to me. I know I've talked enough today, but I don't know. God's just really been moving and, and talking to me lately. I, the workers are, the work is much and fewer chosen and even fewer want to do anything. That's true. And uh, <laughs> you have a good pastor here. You need to pray for your pastor. Appreciate your pastor. Appreciate one another. Yeah, um, I, I'm just thankful to get to know you folks and to be here. But uh, the prayer just kept running through my mind as, as we were singing and, and you all were talking, especially since everybody just seemed to have a burden Praise when God. they came in. There was a good spirit here, but yes. it just seemed to be there was some type of a, a yes. hold back or a wall or, yes. or something trying to hold back and hinder the spirit. Uh -huh. And um, I've been teaching on Wednesday, night, Wednesday nights out of First Samuel. And uh, I just want to share this little bit of scripture real quick with you. It's First Samuel chapter 12, starting with verse 22. And while you're looking for that, when you feel that you're alone, you're not alone. He's never forsaken you. And he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever, and ever, and ever, and ever. And I claim on to that promise. Um, I've got two siblings that are out of church. I've got a stepson that's not in church, grandson. Um, you name it. We Everybody should have a burden for somebody. And if you don't, then you need to pray about it because you're not trying very hard. <laughs> Even if it's your next door neighbor. Uh, but health is, is another thing. You know, I heard a lot of, of prayer for, you know, illnesses, yeah. sicknesses. And it's, you know, like with Jimmy and things. We've, we've had stuff going on. David's going to go for uh, an autism evaluation in November. Pray for that. Um, I just want to testify real quick again with, um, and normally I don't do this, but God's been branching. I did this a couple months ago. gave a quick testimony uh, about my anxiety. Um, you know, a lot of people think that anxiety is like this thing that should be hidden uh -huh. and you shouldn't right. talk about it because you should be ashamed. That's right. And yeah. I got to reading one day in Psalms and, and David, he cracks me up because you get into Psalms 22 and he's like, oh God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. Then you get to Psalms 23. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me to lie down in green pastures. And he's like, oh, happy. He is the most bipolar guy I've ever heard. <laughs> and then you go back to 22. Oh, Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? So <laughs> I'm not bipolar. I'm not depressed. God has been good. I have nothing to be depressed about. But God has not given the spirit of fear. That's my favorite. God has not given a spirit of fear, but of sound mind and love and joy. And that's in 1 Timothy. You can look that up. And... Um, we need to stop fearing what man's going to do. We need to stop fearing about this old body. We need to stop fearing what people talk about us. We need to stop fearing. We just need to stop fearing because the devil is a liar. And he is trying to rob your joy because if he's got you staying at home because you're upset, then you're of no good to him because you're not going to preach. You're not going to teach. You're not going to sing. You're not going to do anything. And he knows that he's already got everybody else in the world doing drugs and drinking uh, and, and you name it. He's got them all wrapped yeah. up. He's not worried about them. He's worried now about the church. Look at your numbers. Yeah. I'm tickled that you had 45 last Sunday. Yeah. Our church was lucky to have 15 during our revival last week. Yeah. Sad but true. They can go to Disney World. They can go to Walmart. They can do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm scared to death of COVID. Oh, yeah. Well, Paul tells us not to be ignorant, brother. And I'm not going to wallow you if I think you're sick. I'll wave and say I love you. You know, but... But forsake not the assembling of yourselves, and I'm not going to stop going to church just because of COVID or anything else. If he could protect Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fire, I'm probably okay with a little touch of COVID. So, but I wouldn't do anything to make you all sick. I promise I wouldn't come if I had COVID. <laughs> anyway, so let's look at uh, chapter 12, starting with verse 22, 1 Samuel. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake. Because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover is for me, God forbid, that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord. And I'm throwing this in there. And nothing else. Only the Lord. Nothing else. And serve him in truth with all of your heart. For consider how great the things he hath done for you. But if ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. And God will bless his word. It never returns void. Um, but I just want you to think about that. Whenever you're for, you feel forsaken or lonely or, you know, tired, don't get weary and well-doing because God's still right here. If you, if you feel he went away, you moved because he's still right here. And I'm just thankful that he has given us the opportunity to continue 
singing. We've done this for 16 years. I've uh, been married 14, and, and God's just been good to us. And I pray that he lets Jimmy make it to 100. He tells me he will. So we can continue. <laughs> So we can continue God's work. And, you know, some days you wake up cranky. Some days you wake up tired and you're like, you know, today with two services so far apart, you're like, I don't know, God. I don't know. There's not enough Jesus and coffee today. We need to amp it up a little bit. But he always makes a way and he always takes care of it. And and I get joy just from being around you all. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. People say, oh, why are you so happy? And, and my dad, I don't know if any of you, he's a pastor and Upshur County, and he's a Baptist preacher, so we don't see, I, I'm more Pentecostal, I'm Baptistal, I guess, but we have, we have a good time, and, uh, you know, he's always happy and trying to sing and uplift people, you know, we can't fool ourselves, you know, just like with that anxiety, I've had panic attacks since I was 14 years old, and, you know, God will turn things totally around when you don't expect it again, I fought this and fought this, I'll be 37 in December, and when I got pregnant with Andrew, of course, I couldn't take anything, and I was on the edge. And I was in the hospital, and I had a great big, um, uh, what they call it? It was like a MRSA thing is what it was, a huge thing. And I almost had sepsis, and Jimmy stayed with me. I was in the hospital for a week. Andy was just flipping around, acted like nothing was happening. And I'm laying there scared to death, not even because I was sick, but just because I needed something for my anxiety. I was just so amped up because I couldn't have my medicine. And I'm not saying that that's the answer. God's the answer. But, you know, he gives us the, um, the doctors and things to help us. And it took a doctor from New York that is kind of like this. He, he's kind of in the middle, and he's got some verbal thoughts. But he also acknowledges God. I said, you know, he used you in the toolbox, whether you know it or not, because after I had Andrew... I've tried all these years to get some kind of medicine to help me. Yes. Even Sundays that we'd come here in the past, I mean, I would be on pins and needles. I wouldn't afraid you all. I'd sing to 10,000 people. It was just the devil trying to stop. Yeah, he will. He will. And he will do anything, whatever he can find that's your hook, that's what he's going to use. But you have to decide. He has not forsaken you. Will you forsake him and what he's calling you to do? And it says that men and women shall prophesy. And that's what we're running with at our church yes, now. That's right. Uh, we, we don't have enough deacons. We don't have enough trustees. We're, we're trying to fill in the gap. And I've just been jumping in with a couple of my, my girlfriends at church, and we've just been doing it. Because you know what? And it's nothing against the men, but if the men will not step up, I believe God will call the women, just like he did Phoebe and Deborah and Aquila and Priscilla and all these people to do his work. Although I do believe men should do it to be the head of the house if it's possible. But at any rate... Um, we just need to be willing to do what we can for him because he's done so much for us. And I'm just thankful that he has delivered me. I'm not totally over it, but I've had such a peace and a calmness and, and, and a higher increase of joy. Not only since I had the miracle baby, I knew he was there. It took a long time to get it, 11 years, but I knew we had another baby coming. And, um, and then I've been able to, you know, I went to Walmart last night. I took David in Walmart. I hadn't been in Walmart for years. I'm not joking. Because I get in big places, and I was like, yikes. So God will deliver you. You may not make it 100%. You may not be where you want to be, but just keep trusting. It's coming. I kept thinking of the woman that had the, con the blood condition, and I thought, man, that was a long time. And I thought, I dealt with this a lot longer than what she did. And, and I'd been to doctor and doctor and psychiatrist and therapy and and none of that mess works. Jesus is the one that will break your bondage if you just let him. So don't forsake him. He's not forsaken you. He loves you. We love you. And I'm just thankful to be here today. Thank you for having us. It's always good to see everybody out. And uh, just continue to pray for me and my family that we'll do what we need to do for the Lord. Uh, we'll be praying for this church. It's beautiful. You guys have done a lot of work since the last time we was here. God's blessing. And um, I'm just very glad of that. So thank you all very much. I'm going to turn it back over to Sister Geneva. And um, God bless. God is great. He is yes. wonderful. He's kind. He's long suffering. You know, this morning, as, as, as you sing this little family up here, I want you to roll back the curtain of memory in your mind. I want you to think this morning. This is, this is a family that has fulfilling the greatest commandment that God said. Jesus gave his disciples this word to love. God yes. with your heart, your soul, and your mind. Yes, amen.
man, he said, then you're to love your fellow man. Likewise. They love people. That's why they're going out to start a new I want you to think in your mind how many of you, as a little child, you see this little boy standing for the dad, dad, dad. How many, how many, how many, how many of you can say that you ever seen your daddy or mother? I'm talking about the older people when you basically did. Yeah. But you get the younger generation, they don't, none of them takes their kids to church. Yeah. Even if they go to church, somebody else picks them yeah. up, yeah. brings them. Yeah. What kind of memory mm -hmm. is that? What kind of memory are you going to be in your child's mind? Yes. Who are you going to look up to and mentor? Who you always up not my neighbor when he said the second commandment was just as great as the first one, yeah. loving God, you're supposed to love your neighbor. Amen. How many of you ever takes the time right. to pray for a child? Right. To look at children as you see them on the highways and yes. byways of life. Or next door you know they live in that household. We don't have time, Mary. We don't have time again. We can't be bothered with kids. You know, uh, as I look at Terry and Sterling uh, back here. No, this child's not a bit of kid or kin. Them. But they take these kids and then yes. they'll bring them to church. Yes. And I'm so proud, like I said, that young dad is like starting to bring their children to church. I thank God for missing yes. bringing her grandson to church. Where and who is these kids mm. going to look up to? Who are they going to know? Thank God for grandmas. Mm. Thank God for neighbors and yes. friends. How many of you, how many of you have got adult children they've never seen you pray a prayer? Mm. They've never heard you praise the Lord. They've never heard you. And you know something? As my friend back there told me, one of her greatest regrets was that she hadn't been to church when she was younger. She told me that. And I've heard a lot of people say that. I've heard a lot of them say, my sister did, but she don't care about that anymore. Let me tell you something. She's told me this. She wished that she would have took the children to church more when she was when they were young. The dawn of the day is coming. Yeah. When churches is not going to be open. That's right. And how many families do you see that's families anymore that there's a mommy and a daddy? Yeah. Um, I, I know, you know, I know our world is so diverse yeah. that now a family is not a mommy and a daddy. It could be anybody. Mm -hmm. But you know, God still want to be God. Amen. That's right. Yes, pray for them. Yes. Pray for them as they go about. Yes. Amen. That God will set them as an example of what a family does. What does a family do? Right. Read, it's not only going out bringing the, uh, the bacon home so mama can fry it up in the pan. We need to be bringing the word of God out so that they can get that into their hearts and into their minds. And if you're babysitting them, if you're just watching them, if you're letting them ride to church with you in your car, if you're a grandmother or a grandfather, Mary, you don't receive them occasionally. Yeah. If you can't do nothing out loud because of the ignorance of some of the people, spiritually put your hand on them. Yeah. Say, God, save them. Because yeah. we're living in an awful world. Yeah. There's not very many things called family anymore. The devil's <coughs> disrupted it to things that two women can be a mommies and daddies, and two men can be mommies and daddies. What are those little children going to think if they never see no God in you? If they don't see the right way in you? And I love it that Bonnie and Mike, is, you know, we know that baby is their adopted son. I thank God for it. I thank God for Marianne. Is Marianne downstairs? Uh, as she brings her clients. Marianne, they're, they're foster or foster kids. She takes people into her home. She brings them, as Jesse says all the time, she's so glad that God put her into somebody's home that brings her to church. I'm telling you people, we're going to pay a great price. America is getting darker as far as God's concerned. No, it's getting a lot brighter, Beverly, uh, with knowledge. Our kids are so smart. Uh, yeah, Jeffrey, they can take anything apart and put them back together again. They can do all this kind of stuff already. But what do they know about God? What do they know? I, I get on Chrissy and Terry, don't you think? I know. 
Eight needs to be reading his Bible. If you've got kids and you're not reading your Bible, then how do you think they're going to read their way? What do you think they're going to read their journey? If you ever get your new wife, if you ever get a daughter, if you get a foster child, if they don't ever see you do it, what makes you think that they're going to do it? This is an example for us this morning. I mean, yes, he clapped his hands and he was noisy at times. <laughs> Look, what memory will that be in his mind that he didn't see his mommy and daddy yet? Cussing and screaming, mm. calling them dumb names, yeah. and him calling sinful yeah. things in front of them. Did you not tell them before the church said, Jesse, that you're so glad that God put you in Marianne and David's home yeah. that you can get to come to church? And the young men back there, to Jack and his, the, other, the other young man, I mean, aren't, aren't you glad? They, see, I'm, I'm telling you, neighbors and friends, you are somebody's light. Or you're somebody Andrews. So this morning, let's, let's take an example. That no matter what age you are, no matter what, what, what education level you're in, no matter what financial situation you are, teach God by living godly, by practicing his principles. So this morning in here, if you, if you, these songs, they were old time songs, most of them. Maybe except the one where she wrote, but it's, it's an old one to her. It's a good one. And we'll forgive them because they didn't know all the other old times. <laughs> They'll work on that. Message me a little bit. Okay, praise God. <laughs> but listen, if your heart, if you if you feel today that you and God's not in the right position, if you feel today that you have you can't talk to nobody else about God, that you're not being the example you should be. Whether you're a mommy, a daddy, a neighbor, a babysitter, whatever. Do something about yes, it. Yes, amen. Does anybody in here this morning need prayer for their soul? Everybody in here say, if the rapture would happen today, would you be sitting back here, still sitting in your seat, sitting in your down chair at home, or where you can sit at? If death would take you as you leave this building today, where would the yeah. next life breath that you have? Was, you're going you're gonna to have a breath in hell because you're going to be able to talk. You're going to have life in heaven. Where will you spend eternity? That's everybody's, that's everybody's decision to make for themselves. That's their decision to make for themselves. Yeah. Anybody sick and afflicted need prayer for your body? I need to stand in proxy for a granddaughter and my sister. Okay. Right here. 